everyone. I just want to take a minute today to talk about skin health and nutrient deficiencies. Um, if you're on the GAPS diet, you've probably noticed that your skin improves when on the GAPS diet. Um, and that's because you're getting rid of a lot of inflammation, your gut lining is healing, you're taking out any allergy, um, high allergic response foods. So like often on the intro, you're getting rid of dairy um, and maybe nightshades and grains and sugars and all these things that can cause a ton of inflammation and breakouts. So you're removing those foods, the inflammation is going down, your gut lining is being soothed, you're getting a ton more nutrition and just everything's going really well. Another thing is that your detox organs are opening up. So like um, your liver, a ton of the burdens getting lifted off that just through dietary changes. And so when your liver can function more effectively and your kidneys are working really well, and even when your lungs are detoxifying, we're not needing to push as much out through our skin as normal. If all those organs are clogged up from eating a refined food diet and um, with like lots of additives and pollution and all these crazy high chemical burdens that we're used to on like a standard American diet, um, all those organs like the liver get clogged up and then we really need our skin to detox more than ever. And that's when you can get like rashes, psoriasis, acne, um, eczema, all those can be related to just your skin trying to detox. So I did the GAPS diet 10 years ago and that was one of the first things I noticed. I didn't have like crazy bad acne before, but um, week one on the GAPS diet, my skin was amazing. Like it completely was perfectly clear. It was glowing, it was plump, it was dewy. And I'm honestly not exaggerating. I was on the GAPS diet for a year and a half maybe. And daily, if not multiple times a day, people would comment on my skin and ask what I did. And it was all just the GAPS diet. So that was my experience 10 years ago. But time has, we've moved on and we're doing it again. And this time I'm doing the GAPS diet, life's a little bit different. It's not just me. I had a baby, I'm breastfeeding a lot. Um, so some nutrient deficiencies can come into play. And my skin I find is where, since I was a kid, my skin manifests my health more than anything. So that's probably like a lot of you. So it's annoying because you obviously want your skin to be really clear, but it's actually really beneficial because it, it's better for your skin to be breaking out than for you to be having like internal pain, um, tons of like fatigue, muscle, I guess severe problems. The skin isn't really too bad of a problem. So it's actually good. Um, a good way to detox is through your skin, but it is annoying. So all that to say, this time on the GAPS diet, um, my skin did not, do the same thing it did 10 years ago. It wasn't like perfectly going and everything. And it took me a while to realize what the issue was. But I realized this time I've had a lot more um, demand for high nutrition foods. Like I said, I had a baby, I'm breastfeeding a lot. And so my nutrient levels, I'm still eating really well and doing some supplements, but I just needed that extra push of nutrition to really encourage a healthy glow and clear skin. So this video is aimed for people who are doing the GAPS diet. You've already, um, I guess you don't need to be doing the GAPS diet, but if you've already looked at um, your microbiome, so you're having lots of good meat stocks that have a ton of collagen in them, and you've removed sugars and irritating foods that can cause you to break out, and you're doing probiotic foods like sauerkraut. So you're kind of taking care of your microbiome already, but maybe you still have persistent acne or things that need to be addressed. This video is for you, and I'm gonna talk about three supplements that are really, really helpful while doing the GAPS diet if you have skin issues. Um, and there are more than these ones, but these are just ones that are really, really common. I find them a lot, and so I'm just gonna walk you through what they are. So the first supplement I would recommend looking into if you have acne or skin issues is zinc. Um, if you have a history of veganism or vegetarianism, there is a very high chance that you have some sort of zinc deficiency, especially if you have any skin issues. Um, Plant-based foods are very, very high in copper, generally speaking, and animal foods are a lot higher in zinc. And copper and zinc are antagonistic. So if you think of a seesaw at you know, a playground, if you're getting tons of copper, it's automatically gonna lower your zinc status. Where if you're having tons of animal food, like if you're on a carnivore diet, 
you're probably gonna have a lot more copper. But generally we see a lot more zinc deficiency, so elevated copper, than we do um, too little copper and a lot of zinc. So if you've been on a vegan, vegetarian diet, there's a really high chance you have a ton of copper in your system and probably not as much zinc. So in order to balance that out, you really have to pay special attention to getting zinc animal foods in your diet. Um, the highest source of zinc is oysters, and then it's red meat, um, and then like chicken, the dark meat of chicken, lamb, I think even pork, duck, animal foods are super high in zinc, where those plant foods are high in copper. So there are some plant-based foods that are higher in zinc, like pumpkin seeds come to mind, but if we look at that seesaw, yes, they're high in zinc, but they're also high in copper. So it's not actually gonna change our status and it's not actually gonna move our zinc levels up. It's actually just gonna keep them the same. So you really wanna focus on those animal foods. Or if you wanna supplement, um, there is, I cannot, I think it's called Oyster Plus. Yes. And it is basically just crushed up oyster shells that are really, really high in zinc and they're in a little supplement form. And I love food-based supplements. They're coming right from nature. They're coming in the form that they're um, generally supposed to be consumed. They're not lab manufactured so our body can recognize them and consume them and absorb them and use them really well. So that's a great supplement that I'll link below if you think you have some sort of Zinc, sub, um, zinc deficiency. And if you're an adult and you have acne, that is a pretty good sign that there is a zinc deficiency there. Um, another couple signs are like nausea, lack of appetite, and lack of taste. So a lot of elderly people are really deficient in zinc. Um, you know, they'll have a coffee and they'll put like six sugars and milk and you know, all this stuff and you're like, how do you eat that? It's because they have a zinc deficiency they can't taste very well. Or they'll put a ton of salt on their food um, and that is a classic sign that you're not having enough zinc. So if any of those um, ring a bell, like you put a ton of salt on your food or um, you really can't taste things well or lack of appetite, that's what I experienced um, postpartum, which is not good to experience postpartum. You need to be eating lots for breastfeeding. Um, those are really good signs that you might wanna check your zinc levels. Maybe get some oysters in there, some red meat, and just take a look at that. I started resupplementing with zinc about a month ago and almost immediately I noticed my skin cleared up. Um, like if I got acne, it just cleared up way quicker. Um, any, any, like, you know, if my daughter scratched me, it would just heal so much quicker than previously when my, my um, levels of zinc were a lot lower. So that's number one. The second supplement to look into that I really love is homeopathic silica. Um, Silica is really good for hair, skin, nails. Um, it promotes collagen creation in our body, and it's just really essential. And the Schuler's Tissue Salts, it's a homeopathic silica. So it's actually the form of silica that is most abundant in our body. And it's super safe. It's, yeah, non-toxic. You're not gonna overdose because it's homeopathic. Um, but it's considered a cleanser and conditioner. And what it does is it really, silica is known for pushing things out of your body. So everything from like splinters to acne, boils, stuff like that. If you take silica, it really helps your body just push stuff out. Um, so if you have like cystic acne or blackheads or something like that, this is really, really good. And it's like $10 on Amazon or at a health food shop. Really cheap, you get 125 tablets. Like I said, super safe. Um, great for any you know collagen deficiencies as well. Great for hair, skin, nails, um, ulcers and styes as well. So even if you were to get like glass in your foot, it really pushes it out. And that's why it's so great for acne. I started taking it, I've had it for ages and there's times where I've taken it before, but after having a baby recently, I started taking it because I just was like, I really need to get on top of my supplements again. So I started taking silica and honestly, overnight, I noticed a difference. Just the texture of my skin went from like, like a little bit bumpy to just, it felt so much smoother. It felt so much softer. So I honestly couldn't recommend this highly enough and people don't talk about homeopathic silica and that's why I wanted to throw it in there. And the last supplement I wanna talk about is vitamin A. Vitamin A is crucial for skin health, acne, psoriasis, eczema, 
itchy skin, dandruff, dry skin, all of these, the little bumps on the back of your arms, these are all signs of vitamin A deficiency. Um, another is night blindness or losing vision. Um, a lot of times we think of vitamin A as like, you know, pumpkin, carrots, we think carrots, amazing vitamin A, capsicum, bell peppers, all these things, but that's actually carotenoids. Um, they are not actually vitamin A. The vitamin A we're talking about is retinol and it is absorbed from animal products. Animals, herbivores, cows, they can take the sun, they can take the plants, the grass, and they can convert carotenoids to retinol very well. Humans are not very good at converting that, if, if we convert any at all. It's very, very minor. So you can eat all the carrots in the world, your skin will turn orange, but you're not gonna necessarily have high vitamin A status. Um, so like I said, we're talking about retinol, and that is in animal products. Um, liver, it's really high in liver, um, duck liver, it's high in, well not high, but decent in egg yolks, butter, um, some raw dairy, cheeses. So it, it's all animal foods basically, cream. Um, but I love cod liver oil. I've been taking this on and off for 10 years and I think I'm finally like, I'm on it 100%. This is a Green Pastures fermented cod liver oil. It's disgusting, but it's really high in retinol. And I have noticed nothing but amazing things over the years when I've been taking this and with other people. Um, I've seen people who come in with rashes head to toe completely gone in like less than 24 hours after taking this. Um, I've had uh, times where like I react to, um, what's it called, laundry detergent and I get, you know, this crazy rash on my body for days. And then I finally take this and like within three hours it's gone. Um, it's great for acne. It's I've seen it be super helpful because it's really high in vitamin, um, omega-3s as well and vitamin D. So it is so good for skin. It is so good for acne. It's really, it helps so many people with skin. Eczema, psoriasis, dandruff, um, dry skin, and this. For me, this is a huge sign. When I get those bumps on the back of my arms, I know I need to start taking more cod liver oil. Um, and I've also healed cavities with this. And I'm not just thinking, oh, in my mind I had a cavity and then I healed it. No, I actually went to the dentist I don't go to the dentist very often. He says, oh, you have a cavity. I get back on the cod liver oil. He's like, I think, yeah, I went to the dentist. He said, you have a cavity on this tooth, whatever one it was. Um, and he said, let's schedule an appointment to get it filled. And I was like, oh, I just, I wanna give it some time. I kind of made an excuse. I got on top of the cod liver oil, um, just got on top of it, took it regularly, got back into the groove of it, went back to the doctor and he, didn't, he said, um, I think I went for a cleaning like two years later or a year later and he was like, yep, your teeth look all good. And I was like, I don't have any cavities. It's like, nope, no cavities. And I said, check that tooth. And he didn't remember, but he's like, no, you don't have a cavity there. So either he was lying or I really did heal my cavity. And vitamin A is great as well because it assists um, vitamin D absorption. It helps calcium get into your bones and it's just essential for seriously everything. And it's definitely necessary during pregnancy and people tell you to avoid it, which is absolutely crazy. Um, so this is Green Pastures fermented cod liver oil. There was kind of a huge scandal years ago in regards to like it being, I don't know, a different type. It wasn't like a true Alaskan cod or something. Um, and there was like this huge controversy and people stopped taking it and everything. And so I kind of got off it for a while because just like out of fear, but at this stage, I just go with how it responds to my body and I've had nothing but amazing results over and over and over again. Um, and then Louisa Williams also, she does a matrix reflux testing and she consistently, everybody responds well to this product. And that's been my experience as well with energet energetic testing is that everyone responds well to this product. Even if they don't respond well to any other products, people need this vitamin A and vitamin D, that retinol that's easily absorbed, not the carotenoids from plant foods. Um, true vitamin A is what we're after. So, cod liver oil, homeopathic silica, and zinc are three supplements that are really, really important to look into if you have any skin issues. And then of course, you wanna be doing your probiotics, um, removing irritating foods, lowering chemicals in your body, whether it's um, 
you know, cleaning products or makeup or, you know, whatever it is, you're wanna, you want to lower that as well because then you're, you're giving your skin less to detox. Um, the lower chemical burden, the less it's going to have to detox. The less allergy, um, high allergy foods that you're eating, like maybe it's dairy for you, maybe it's pasteurized dairy. If you can cut that out, um, it might be a huge thing that helps with acne and skin issues. So I hope that was helpful. I would love to hear if you have any supplements or anything that's really, really helped your skin. Um, I'm not huge into supplements. I'm not someone that's like, take a supplement for everything, but I do recognize when they're necessary. And like I said, coming from a plant-based or a vegan or a vegetarian diet or um, never taking liver or cod liver oil before, you're probably deficient in vitamin A and those good fat soluble vitamins. And then silica is just great all the time. Um, so I hope that was helpful. Like I said, I'd love to hear in the comments if you've had a good experience on the GAPS diet. Pretty much everyone I talks to, talk to, um, it helps their skin. So let me know and thanks for watching. Hi, thanks for watching my video. You can feel free to comment or like below or you can follow me on Instagram or on my website.